Welcome back to the DFS Fet Shop. I am your host, the DFS Jerusalem, and you can follow me on Twitter, of course, at DFS Jerusalem. Tonight, we're going to be breaking down last night's six game NBA slate. Uh, we're going to go with our usual formatting of the show where we highlight uh, my core four plays. This is to provide those checks and balances, give you that transparency to let you know that the guys that I'm talking about are definitely the guys I'm playing. Uh, then we're going to go into our feature four players of the night. Then we're going to take a look at my very best DraftKings lineup, uh, jump into uh, a quick recap of last night's action, uh, take a look at the player pricing pool uh, for tonight's uh, six-game NBA slate, and then we're going to jump into the point totals to get an idea of where we want to invest uh, the most of our DraftKings salary. Now, first things first, just want to thank you all uh, for continuously supporting the brand, uh, making it your own, becoming a part of this thing. I really appreciate it. I'm going to continue to be dropping these videos for you. Uh, we've also got a lot of traffic uh, in the VIP Facebook group. Shout out to everybody in the VIP. Uh, also, man, got to thank everyone that's been subscribing uh, via the DFSSweatshop.com website. Your generosity can, can will not go unnoticed. I thank you very much uh, for being a part of this thing. And let's go ahead and jump into uh, my core for review. Now, you you guys know uh, I, I, <clears throat> I make it visible, post it in the VIP every day, as well as we update uh, the uh, DFSSweatshop.com website. Those are the only two places where you're going to see uh, my core four and actually get the strategy behind my complete roster build uh i did go over to the the draft draft stop show uh earlier yesterday and got to chop it up with a real cool guy man kyle kibbers 23 on twitter uh shout out to you man thank you uh, we had a really great time over there i'm still looking forward to doing my sports world show you know i got to get at kyle and george never to give me the opportunity but uh let's go ahead and jump into the core four review we're going to start with my best play of the core four. I was a little bit wrong about this guy in terms of ownership. I thought that because the game was so late, uh, we were not going to see this ownership that we saw on, on this guy. He was at 30% owned, 10.9K. Went out and brought us back 67 DraftKings points, right around that 6x value that we look for when we roster a guy like this. And, and it was uh, Boogie Cousins, man. He went out and had a really great game. Uh, the ownership was pretty high on him, as it should have been, because he's he's one of the league's best players, especially when it comes to daily fantasy. The next guy we're going to talk about is Danilo Gallinari. Now, he was at 9% ownership, so he was definitely in position uh, to do some damage and get some separation and some GPPs. At 5.7K, he brought us back 22.5 DraftKings points and snowflaked out on us. Uh, not a very good showing. Uh, for Danilo Gallinari in the core four or the entire Denver Nuggets team of starters for that matter. Uh, next we're going to talk about, uh, next play is going to be Kyle Lowry. He was about 11% owned in most GPPs and at 8.1K, we were looking at 40 DraftKings points from him. Now he didn't fall that far under the mark, but 33.75 DraftKings points and a plus matchup at the crib. Uh, he was definitely in position uh, to do better than he did, but he didn't hurt. He didn't hurt us as much as Gallinari did. The last play we're going to talk about is Pat Beverly. Now he was 23% owned. Everybody is 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 hip to that. Everybody is hip to the Houston fast-paced offense. A lot of possessions, a lot of touches. Beverly is already a really uh, decent defender. So the price was low on him, about 4.9k, and he brought us back 29.75 DraftKings points, exactly where we needed him to be. To get that 6x value so it was not a horrible night for the core four but definitely could have been better had we gotten some better play from Danilo Gallinari as well as Kyle Lowry now we're gonna be jumping to our feature four players tonight these are the most talked about tweeted about guys in the DFS sweatshop in the VIP in the chat uh, whenever we get in there and also on Twitter uh, we're gonna start with the who that scoring all them points over there player of the night and that is going to go to Mason Plumley. this guy went out and had a monster game he was definitely a late night hammer if you had him in your lineups he definitely helped you get closer to the cash line uh, at three percent owned ownership was very low on this guy uh, 5.5k went out and brought back 47.25 DraftKings points a very good showing we saw from 
uh, uh, Mason Plumley. The next guy is going to be the, how did I miss that play tonight? This is a guy who has been uh, pretty much under the radar of the entire season. You looked at him as a starter on the roster and was like, man, why is this dude even starting? But at some point, the guy keeps starting. Somebody sees something in him uh, in order to have him in that position to play with the first team. Uh, we knew Dirk Nowitzki is not with the team. The team has taken on uh, so much of a new identity that it was kind of hard to put our finger on when this guy was going to go ahead and have a great game, and he did so tonight. Uh, shout out to E. Lovin, uh, the homie from the VIP and in the Twitter. He's been with me since, for a very long time. This dude called this play, went out and grabbed Dorian Finney-Smith, uh, 3% in ownership, 3.1K, very close to minimum salary. He went out and 10 x on him for 37.75 DraftKings points. Really nice score, and he definitely helped E uh, get to the 300 club tonight. Very good play uh, by you. Uh, the next play is going to be the heat check play of the night. And this isn't always the guy with the highest salary. Uh, but tonight, it is. Because we saw this coming from a mile away. All he had to do was go out and perform and play the game. 26% uh, in ownership for James Harden. 11.4K in salary. And he brought us back 68 DraftKings points. He led all scorers on the night. And that is why you, Mr. Harden, with the beard, are the heat check player of the night. Now... We've come to a part in the show that I really wish I didn't have to do, but there's always that one motherfucker, always, every night, there's that one motherfucker who straight up steals DK dollars in salary from us. And tonight, this dude uh, went out at 16% ownership, stuck us up with no gun for 6.3K in a battle against one of his old college teammates, uh, Punk completely got punked and upstaged and showed out by Boogie. Julius Randle, with the handle, you a motherfucking snowflake with your snowflake ass. How the fuck you gonna go out at the crib and give us 13 DraftKings points? You got to be motherfucking kidding me, man. You a motherfucking snowflake with your old snowflake ass. Let that man destroy you at your crib. Show you up. Back you down. Just destroy you at the crib, man. I don't even want to talk about this cat for, uh, for too long because it's, it's, it's pissing me off. It's pissing me off. He was very close to being a part of my core four. But I said, you know what? No. There's no way he's going to have, you know, uh, as good a game as Boogie does. I thought he was going to have a pretty good game, but not as good as Boogie. So that's why uh, we went with a better player in Boogie Cousins. And tonight, you or a motherfucking snowflake with your old snowflake ass. Now let's go ahead and jump into my best DraftKings lineup. Was not a very good night in the sweatshop for me. I had one guy. Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. If this guy performs, man, I'm on another level tonight. And and you, we, we have that to say a lot of nights in DFS. But that's why we stick close to our bankroll management tactics. And we always live to fight another day. So let's go ahead and jump into. I'm going to show you. This is my best uh, DraftKings lineup here. And I'm going to give you a little bit of my thought process as we made this lineup. Okay, now let's start here. Now, you're going to see a lot of the core four in this lineup, okay? Uh, of course, we had Patrick Beverly, of course. We had Danilo Gallinari in here at some point. We have uh, DeMarcus Cousins, who was able to make the cut and stay. And we also um, had Kyle Lowry in this lineup. Well, what I did was I wanted to move up from, um, from Danilo Gallinari up to Nicholas Batum. So what I did was I paid down uh, at the shooting, at the, at the uh, point guard to Rodney Stuckey, which actually gave me enough capital to move up to uh, Nicholas Batum and Chris Paul from uh, from Lowry. I liked Young all day. I thought he would be a fairly decent play attacking Charlotte on the boards, but that didn't come to fruition. And while I was thinking about that, I did want to get a piece of the Charlotte Hornets in some way, shape, or form. I did not like Kemba on the road, but I did like Nicholas Batum, and that's why we got there. But this guy, man, this guy, Bojan Bogdanovic, he was in such a great position. 
and he was in about 60% of my lineups. I ran, I think I rolled out like 10 lineups today, and uh, he was in at least six, he was in six of them, and not a great performance from him at all. Pretty, pretty, pretty bad night uh, for Bojan Bogdanovic, and this lineup finished with 287.7 uh, uh, DraftKings points. I did cash with this lineup, and I had it entered, and as you can see, quite a few uh, tournaments. I, f I felt good about that lineup, and I had it entered in quite a few tournaments. Uh, one of the other lineups that I had, which is what kind of saved the night, was um, one that I had Mason Plumlee in. He had a really excellent game and kind of saved me from overall ruin. Uh, ended up losing $3 of a $50 buy-in, so wasn't a horrible night. I didn't lose my complete buy-in, but I definitely... Uh, uh, could have been in a, in a better position had a few of the guys uh, that I had uh, panned out. So now that we went over my best uh, DraftKings lineup, let's go ahead and roll through a quick recap of last night's game. Now, in order to do this, I use the um, NBA League Pass uh, on my phone. It's, I have it mobile, I have it on my computer, I have it on my TV, on my Xbox. This is an invaluable tool. I've got to explain that to you because... Uh, nothing is better than the eye test. We can read all the stats. We can uh, get all of the Twitter updates. We can do all of that shit. But if you're not actually watching the games, watching players play, you're not going to know uh, when you should pull the trigger on a guy that everybody else may not be on. Uh, <clears throat> so let us go ahead and begin uh, with the first game on the slate. This is the Indiana Pacers at home against the Charlotte Hornets. Um... Uh, we're going to start on the Charlotte Hornets side where Michael Kidd Gilchrist had a fairly decent game for his price point. Uh, he grabbed 10 boards, had 6 points, an assist, 2 steals, and a block. Pretty decent game from him. We saw Marvin Williams for about 28 minutes have 13-2 and two to go with 2 assists and 2 steals. And Nick Batum uh, was the best play in this game. Actually, he had 13 points to go with 10 rebounds and 3 assists. Now, I was on uh, Jeremy Lamb early in the day. I just liked them because I, I, I felt like Kimba was kind of hobbled and we would see some extended run from Jeremy Lamb for that reason. Maybe Kimba tweaked something or they just wanted to kind of, you know, uh, not give him the full, full allotment of minutes. But Kimba did play 35 and Jeremy Lamb only played 13. Now, in Jeremy Lamb's defense, the 13 minutes that he did play, he had eight points and five boards. So he was actually playing well, but just didn't get to see as many minutes as... Uh, the Charlotte Hornets were down in this game, and they played Kemba, and they tried to bring him back. Uh, Kemba had 12 and 2 to go with 5 assists and 2 steals. Not a, a good game for him at all. He was a snowflake definitely tonight. Uh, we also saw uh, Cody Zeller for 31 minutes, and he had 8 points and 7 boards to go with an assist and 2 blocks. On the Indiana side of the ball, Paul George really underwhelmed. We thought he was in a really good spot uh, to play well tonight, and that was not the case he had 22 and 5 to go with 3 assists and 1 steal. And early on the draft shot show, we talked a lot about Miles Turner and how he could attack the Charlotte Hornets on the boards. And he did just that. Go ahead, baby. Unless you want to give me some sugar. And he did just that. Uh, Miles Turner had 22 and 7 to go with 1 steal and 4 blocks. Pretty good game from him. The surprise of this game was a play we also talked about. It was uh, Jeff Teague, uh, 34 minutes for him, 16 points, 5 rebounds, 11 assists, and 1 steal. Nice game from him. I think we saw about 41 DraftKings points out of Jeff Teague. Uh, we saw some decent minutes from Rodney Stuckey as well as C.J. Miles. They both turned in fairly decent performances for those low price points, but uh, not enough to really make a dent in a tournament. Uh, Glenn Robinson III did exactly what I thought he would do. He stunk up the joint. He played 32 minutes and had three three points, six boards, two assists, one steal, and three blocks. Not a great game from him at all. Uh, the next game we're going to talk about is the Toronto Raptors at home against the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, this game was a blowout, but it didn't really turn into a blowout until late in the fourth quarter where we saw uh, <clears throat> Terrence Ross come off the bench and in 20 minutes had 25 points and five rebounds. One assist, one steal, one block. Great game from Terrence Ross. I don't know how much we can look for that going forward, but he's going to have these games. Uh, Damari Carroll, in his return back after that game of that day of rest, had 13 points and seven rebounds to go with two assists 
and one steal. We also saw Jonas Valanciunas uh, go up and get uh, 13 boards and an assist to go with 11 points. DeMar DeRozan, 30 points. Didn't do much else in the way of peripheral stats. He had three rebounds and three assists. Uh, so it was a decent game from him. But you need more. You just need more more peripherals uh, to justify ro- rostering DeRozan at that price point. Kyle Lowry, we talked about him already. He had 18 and seven assists. Took with three rebounds and one steal. Not a great game from him. And we didn't see too much else off of the Toronto bench. But the game was a blowout. On the Milwaukee side, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, started off very slow, but he ended up right in the ship and having a really good night. In 38 minutes, he had 30 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, and 3 steals for him. Uh, we saw Matthew De La Vadova for 28 minutes, and he had 10 assists to go with 2 points. Uh, he doesn't do anything else besides uh, the assist and occasional steal, but just a couple of points here and there. So I don't know how, how much we can roster Delhi uh, with confidence going forward. Jabari Parker, who I really liked. Uh, had 27 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, and 1 steal. The next game we're going to talk about is going to be the Miami Heat at home against the Washington Wizards. This game was only like a a, a point differential. And uh, the Miami Heat played a really excellent game, especially uh, Goran Dragic. Now, the ownership was low on him. I believe he was about 9%. In most GPPs, people just did not really feel safe rostering him. But in 30 minutes, he had 34 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists to go with the steal. We saw a decent game from Hassan Whiteside. Not what you want, because we thought we were getting a steal at 8.4K. Uh, he definitely has 50, 60-point upside, but we didn't see that very much tonight. 17 points, 16 rebounds, 1 steal, and 2 blocks. Uh, Josh McRoberts is actually playing well, and he's continuing to play well. And he only played 17 minutes. But in those minutes, they were very meaningful. He had seven points, eight rebounds, and five assists. Pretty good game from him in his limited action. Uh, we saw 14 points and five rebounds with three assists from Josh Johnson off of the bench. Uh, Josh Richardson had 10 and three to go with three assists and one steal. Not a very great game from him. And Tyler Johnson played 29 minutes and got a tick in every part of the stat sheet. 11 points, three boards, three assists, one steal, and one block on the Washington side of the ball many of us were scared to roster uh, John Wall tonight because we know how good Miami can be against point guards but he looked at that and said you know what I'm John Wall and he had 30 points six rebounds eight assists one steal and one block pretty good game from him Uh, Brad Beal in 35 minutes had 29 and two to go with an assist and four steals nice game from him didn't see much else uh, from the Washington side Uh, Martin Gortat had seven points and ten boards to go with three assists and a steal. And another bad game in a row for Otto Porter. Man, that price has got to come down on him. We also saw uh, Markeith Morris uh, for 37 minutes have ten points, five boards, and three assists. Not a great game from him either. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks is going to be the next game we talk about. They're at home against the Denver Nuggets. I really like this game. Thought it would be very competitive. Uh, didn't see anything wrong with stacking on either side. Uh of the ball in this game, and uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, man, he had a hell of a game, man, at that price point, 3.1K, 13 points, 9 boards, 3 assists, 2 steals, 2 blocks, nice game from him, that's the game we thought we were going to see from Harrison Barnes, but he only had 18 points and 3 rebounds to go with 1 assist and 1 steal, we saw Wesley Matthews continue uh, to play well, he's continuing to play well, he's uh, made himself one of the leaders especially on the first team and on the team overall. Uh, in 32 minutes, he had 25 points, 4 rebounds, and 2 steals. Nice game from him. Darren Williams seems to have gotten over his ailment and is back in the groove with 17 points, 2 assists, excuse me, 2 rebounds, 8 assists, and 2 steals for him. Nice game. We also saw uh, in scrub love some Justin Anderson, man. He had 11 points, 6 boards, and 2 assists to go with the block. Uh... Salah Mejri even had a decent game, man. Seven points, eight boards, one assist, one steal, four blocks for him in 22 minutes. On the Denver side, Nikolai Jokic went the fuck off. This dude this is one of my favorite uh, big men in the league, man. I really enjoy watching Nikolai Jokic play. I wish he would get more minutes. He only had 26 tonight, but in those minutes, he had 27 points, 11 boards, four assists, and one steal. Nice game from him. We also saw a resurgence. Uh, from the Denver backcourt, uh, most notably Emmanuel Moutier, 30 minutes. He has 17 points, two rebounds, four assists, one steal, and one block. And we also saw a nice game off of the bench for Jamal Murray, 15 and six, to go with four uh, 
assist and one steal. Nice game from him. Uh, Jameer Nelson only saw 17 minutes, didn't really play that much. Maybe Mike Malone has kind of figured out that, hey, maybe I should play my young guys more. Go figure. I don't know how long it's going to last because he's like one of the craziest coaches in the league. Him, Carlisle, and Jason Kidd. I hate to involve myself with their players, but sometimes you just got to, especially on a, on a slate like this. Uh, Danilo Gallinari uh, definitely snowflaked out on us. He only played 28 minutes. He had 12 points, 8 boards. That was it for him. Uh, Yusuf Nurkic in 18 minutes had 4 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists, and 1 steal. And you want to think that when Mike Malone rolls these guys out there, he's just rolling with the hot hand. If he starts Nurkic and Nurkic plays well, bam, Nurkic gets a lot of minutes. If he plays, starts Nurkic, Nurkic stinks up the joint, and then he brings in Jokic. Jokic starts playing well. Jokic gets all the minutes. So it's very hard to gauge uh, who we want uh, before tip-off. So uh, the next game we're going to get into is going to be the LA Clippers at home against the Portland Trailblazers. This was a fun, exciting game, a very good game to watch. We saw a lot of uh, great offensive plays and players in this game. We're going to start on the Portland side where Mason Plumley, I'm talking about did it all, had 18 points, 7 boards, 6 assists, 1 steal, and 5 blocks, and he always has good games against the Clippers. There's just something about the Clippers that he really gets up for and he plays well uh, against them. Uh, we also saw a really good game from uh, CJ McCollum, 25-5 and five with 3 assists, pretty good game from him. We saw a really nice game uh, from Dame Lillard, was not a Dame game, but he did have 24 points, 5 rebounds, 8 assists, one steal and one block against the vaunted uh, Chris Paul defense that everybody is so afraid of. He went out and he did his thing. We saw a nice game from Evan Turner, 15-4 and four to go with six assists until he got ejected for mixing it up with uh, DeAndre Jordan. And Alan Crabb had 13-2 and two to go with one steal. Pretty nice game from him. On the LA Clippers side, very nice game we saw from Chris Paul. Uh, 14 assists, 5 rebounds, and 21 points to go with 2 steals. Blake Griffin, who was very low owned because he came into the game uh, with a questionable tag all day long. I didn't have any uh, Blake Griffin. I just didn't want to take a chance of him not playing at the last minute. And he had 26 uh, points, 12 boards, and 6 assists with a block and 40 minutes. So he played almost the length of the entire game. We saw DeAndre Jordan for 33 minutes. Decent game from him. 12 boards, 1 assist, 3 steals, 3 blocks to go at 9 points. And J.J. Redick had 19 in his 27 minutes to go with a steal and a block. We thought this was going to be a Jamal Crawford game. Uh, he came in and he shot hot right off of, the, uh, off of the bat. But the game stayed so close that they kind of kept the ball in the hands of their major playmakers. So we saw Crawford for 22 minutes. He had 14 points, 3 assists, and 1 block. Uh, the last game on the slate was the Sacramento Kings uh, at home against the L.A. Lakers. This is where I thought... I was going to run everybody down. I thought Boogie's ownership was going to be around 20%, but it was upwards of 30 actually. And uh, on the Lakers side, we saw a lot of Lou Aldang. guy in the Facebook group says, you know what? Every time uh, the Lakers play one of the more experienced uh, small forwards, like a veteran savvy guy, they leave Lou Aldang out there. They get upwards of 20 minutes. Check some old game logs. You only see him for the first 13 minutes, 14 minutes of the game, and then you never see him again. That guy had a really good point uh, because we saw 26 minutes of uh, Lou Alding against Rudy Gay while he was in the game, and he had 16 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 steals, so the old man can still play. Uh, saw a really nice game uh, from D'Angelo Russell in his limited minutes. Only 19 minutes we saw from him. He had 17 points, 2 rebounds, and 4 assists. Not too much else to speak of on the L.A. Lakers side. Julius Randle, of course, Stunk up the joint with his old snowflake ass in 28 minutes against Boogie. He got destroyed for two points and eight rebounds with a steal. Not a good game at all. And also somebody who was in the running to be a snowflake of the night. But you got to be a starter to be a snowflake of the night. And this dude ain't even no starter. And I knew he would come back down to earth. Sweet Lou Williams falling and stumbling and bumbling and fumbling all over the place. Only had 14 points and one rebound to go with two steals, one block, and uh, one assist in 25 minutes. Not a great game at all. From you, sweet Lou Williams. Uh, on the Sacramento side, we saw a monster game from Boogie Cousins, man. In 34 minutes, he grabbed 16 boards to go with 31 points, 5 assists, 2 steals, and 3 blocks. Nice game from Boogie. We only saw 13 minutes of Rudy Gay. He had 7 points and 5 rebounds to go with 2 assists, 2 steals, and 1 block before he got hurt. Uh, Darren Collison, of course, he likes to hit the chicks, 
but he did go out and score 20 points and dish out four dimes to go with a rebound and a steal. Uh, Garrett Temple had 16 and a triple one with a rebound, assist, and a steal. And Omri Caspi, in his 30 minutes, a really nice increase in minutes for him, he had 13 and six with three assists and one uh, steal. Ty Lawson was probably a good play if you got him in your lineups. Uh, 26 minutes for him. He had eight, uh, six rebounds, five assists, and four steals. Nice game from him. Uh, now that we have gone over all of the games from last night, we recapped those. Let's go ahead and jump into the player pricing pool for tomorrow's six-game NBA slate. We're going to hop on the old DraftKings. And the reason why we do this is because we want to go ahead and generate a player pool in our heads. We want to get a really good idea of what we're looking at before we even uh, jump too heavily into the rosters. Okay, so line up in the NBA, all six games. Here we go. And we're going to start, of course, with uh, Russell Westbrook being the highest price cat on the slate at 12.7K, almost 13000 in salary. That is a hefty price tag. And normally, I'll be like, hell no, I'm not doing that. No, 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 no. But we've only got six games to work with. And we've got some injuries to the team that's going to allow us to maybe stack uh, some <clears throat> Oklahoma City guys with Russell Westbrook so we can maximize on that 12.7K. Uh, 26 strength uh, DVP playing Portland. It's going to be a fast case, fast paced game. They're at the Motor Center tomorrow. I kind of like Russell Westbrook for that price point. Uh, tinkering around with some roster builds already. I was able to fit them in and still uh, get some, some quality rosters that I did kind of like going in. Uh, Anthony Davis at 11.3 is going to come in in the second uh, highest price guy on the slate uh, going up against New Orleans. I like that. That can be a really good matchup. LeBron James is going up against the number one team uh, in the league against small forwards. The DVP is first, and this is the Memphis Grizzlies, but they're going to Cleveland. So I don't know how much that holds up at 9.8. KD at 9.4 against New Orleans. Uh, Jimmy Butler at 8.7 against Minnesota, who is very good against uh, small forwards. Carl Anthony Towns at 8.6. I love that tomorrow against Chicago. Um, Steph Curry at uh, 8.4 is a pretty good play. Dame Lillard against uh, Westbrook. I like that because Russell Westbrook, he spends so much energy on offense. And there's no way he can do what he does and still shut down opposing point guards. So I like that. I think we're going to see a lot of lineups with both of them in it tomorrow. Eric Bledsoe against my Knicks at 8K. I still like Eric Bledsoe. I like that play. Paul Millsap is uh, automatically just jumping out one of my favorite plays on the slate. We know he's back to full health. He's at 7.9K. This guy never really climbs above 8K. He always is around that 7, 7K range somewhere. So I do like Paul Millsap tomorrow. We know Marc Gasol is out, which is definitely going to affect my exposure to that uh, Memphis Cleveland game. Kevin Love at 78 I kind of like that tomorrow. We've got Melo against Phoenix. I like Melo tomorrow. I think it's going to be a really good uh, game. We've got to check on that to see if TJ Warren is going to be playing or if he is playing, if he's going to be getting some meaningful minutes. We've got uh, Chris Stapps Porzingis at 7.6. And you know what? Watch out, world. My Knicks are stackable. They are. Rose, Melo, Porzingis, or Jennings, Melo, Porzingis. My Knicks are stackable. They're like a legitimate team now. Go figure. All right, uh, Draymond Green at 7.5 is a decent play tomorrow. Not one that I really love. He's going to be uh, holding down the Anthony Davis duties. I don't think I'm going to have too much of Draymond Green tomorrow. We've got Kyrie, Low Kyrie Irving at 7.2. No against Memphis perimeter defense. Uh, CJ McCollum against Oklahoma City. Now, normally I wouldn't like this play, but is Robeson going to be guarding him or whoever is starting in place of Oladipo? Oladipo may not play. If Oladipo is out, I definitely like C.J. McCollum tomorrow. Uh, Dwight Howard at 6.9. Looks like a really good play. The revenge game, but it's in Atlanta. They're coming to Dwight. 
He's been playing very well against teams that he played against last year or in the in past year. So I like him. Uh, Mike Conley, of course, is out. Dwayne Wade at six point six looks like a looks like a decent play to me against Chicago. But I would rather take the guy he's guarding in this game. I'd rather have the young, spry Zach Levine against Dwayne Wade than have Dwayne Wade against Zach Levine. Plus, Zach is the price is a little lower on Zach. Clay Thompson at six point five, who I absolutely love tomorrow shooting a jump shot against the New Orleans uh, perimeter defense. Serge Ibaka, you can try it, but I don't like him tomorrow. Zach Levine, we just talked about him. He's a player I absolutely love. I love Zach Levine tomorrow. Derrick Rose is a decent player. I like him. Dennis Schroeder, man. Every time I say I don't like him, he does. He goes out and plays well. I kind of like Derrick Schroeder tomorrow. Dennis Schroeder tomorrow. Uh, Tim Frazier is going to be in play definitely, especially if Drew Holiday is out. As you can see, he is questionable. Drew Holiday here at 6.1K. You've got Andrew Wiggins going up against Jimmy Butler. I don't like that very much. Nikolai uh, Vucevic, you know, he is questionable with that eye uh, situation he had. Then we got Rajon Rondo. Every other week, we can trust Rajon Rondo to go out and have a good game. I think he's in the best spot that he's been in since the last good game he had uh, up against the Minnesota defense. And uh, very two very similar players, he and uh, Ricky Rubio. So I, I do like... Uh, Rajon Rondo tomorrow, he gets the bump to me because he was at home. If the game was in Minnesota, then I would like uh, Rubio more. But the fact that the game is in Chicago, uh, in a more comfortable setting for him and his teammates, I am going to uh, take a look at Rajon Rondo tomorrow. Vic Oladipo, of course, is questionable. We talked about him at 5.9. Jamichael Green is in play because he has to be in play because Mark Gasol is out. So any big in uh, Memphis is going to be in play tomorrow. Uh, Evan Fournier, who I really like tomorrow against Atlanta, 5.7. He's going to be seeing uh, some Kyle Corver. We know um, Kent Bazemore is dead to me, and he's out. So he may see some uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. Whoever it is, Evan Fournier, I think, is going to be able to have his way with him tomorrow. Devin Booker, the price is finally down on him to where I can just take what he does scoring and count everything else peripheral as a bonus because he can drop 25, 30. And make value just doing that. And if anything he does in a peripheral standpoint, is going to be an added bonus. So I do like Devin Booker tomorrow. He is actually a good play, I believe. Gorgie Jang, I absolutely love him against the Chicago Bulls at 5.6K. Uh, Mason Plumley can be a decent play against Portland tomorrow. I mean, excuse me, against Oklahoma City tomorrow. He's going to see some Sam, um, Steven Adams, and uh, of course, uh, Ennis Cantor. But I think, I think you can look to Mason Plumlee if you wanted to uh, pay in the middle for center tomorrow. Uh, Steven Adams at 5.3. Not very decent play. I don't like him very much. Bismack is going to be questionable. Uh, we got to keep our eyes on that because if Bismack Biombo and Nikolai Vucevic is out, that kind of gets that bump to not only Serge Ibaka, but uh, Aaron Gordon is going to see an increase in minutes. So we, we got to pay, pay attention to that. Uh, Zach Randolph, another part of that three-headed monster that's going to be in Memphis tomorrow with uh, Marcus Saul out for rest. Taj Gibson is in play against Minnesota. Uh, Tristan Thompson, no. Tyson Chandler, this is a revenge game. He played for the Knicks, stole some money from us a while back. I think he's, he's in a spot to have a really good game against either Joe Kim Noah or Kyle O'Quinn, whoever, whoever is in the game at 4.9K. I don't think you can pass up on that. Robin Lopez, decent play at 4.8. Uh, Maurice Harkless is going to see... Uh, a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, Roberson tomorrow, especially if he's starting. So I don't know how I feel about uh, Maurice Harkless. Alfred Payton, can we get another Payton game, another good Payton game? I think if there's any team that we can get it on, it's going to be the Atlanta Hawks. They are really bad against point guards, and uh, the price is right on him, man. 4.7, that's a really nice price on a guy that has 40-point upside. Ricky Rubio, I do not like him tomorrow. Uh, Tony Allen would be in play for me. Uh, if we saw some Marc Gasol, but somebody's got to pick up the scoring load. Somebody's got to do it. And with Marc Gasol out, somebody's got to pick up those stats that he had, and it might be Tony Allen. So we need to look check on that going forward. Uh, Kent Bazemore, he's probably going to be out tomorrow. Thabo Stefalosha, I like him at 4.6. Andre Robeson, I like him at 4.5. to get some of that exposure uh, to the top when we talk about uh, Russell Westbrook. Tim Hardaway Jr. is probably going to be starting. 4.4, he's in play, but I don't like him very much. Brandon Knight against my Knicks at 4.4. He is in play. Brandon Jennings at 4.4. He's also in play. Kylo Quinn, no. Aaron Gordon, uh, maybe. Andrew Harrison, no. Evan Turner, he may get a suspension because of what happened tonight. We need to check on that. Terrence Jones, no. P.J. Tucker. Now, if we see uh, 
TJ Warren back. I don't like PJ Tucker at all. Uh, Mike Muscala at 4K. Alex Lynn. I like Alex Lynn at 4K against the New York Knicks. DJ Augustine, he is in play because he's starting, but I still would rather pay up a little bit more, a, a grand more, to get Alfred Payton, who I know is going to see the increased minutes uh, in the offense. Kyle Korver, uh, he's in play, but not not for me. Uh, Jeff Green, no. Nikolai Miritich at 3.9K against Minnesota. That may be a nice sneaky tournament play there. Cole Aldridge, Courtney, Courtney Lee, Troy Daniels, Joakim Noah at 3.9, Alan Crabb. Not too much else I see. We got Langston Galloway and some scrub love at 3.7. Can be a decent play tomorrow. Uh, Jerry and Grant, no. Ed Davis, 3.6 against Oklahoma City. That might not be a bad play if you want to punt that center position. Uh, J.R. Smith at 3.5. Not a bad play. 3.5. He's playing. He's healthy. He's starting. That's that's not bad for J.R. Smith. Uh, Channing Fry at 3.5. No. Anthony Morrow, if he is starting in place of... Uh, Vic Oladipo, we can look to Anthony Morrow tomorrow. Etuan Moore at 3.4. No, I'm going I'm going ham. Tomorrow, tomorrow, Etuan Moore at 3.4. Uh, yeah, so not a lot to choose from, but we know the slate is going to open up. It's going to bloom like a beautiful flower, and there's going to be many uh, areas of value and things that we can uh, look forward to and look to exploit on tomorrow's slate. Let us go ahead and jump into the point totals. It is a six-game uh, slate tomorrow we're going to be working with. We're going to start <clears throat> in uh, Cleveland with the Cavaliers. This is a 201-point total. Uh, the biggest reason for that is because they're playing the Memphis Grizzlies without Marc Gasol, so it's not, gonna, it's not supposed to be a very high-scoring game. Uh, it is a minus 13. So the Clippers are the home favorite, giving up 13 points to the Memphis Grizzlies. For that reason, I am only interested in the Memphis Scrubs. Guys who I think are going to see an increase in minutes because, number one, they're going to be getting blown out. Number two, because they don't want to just roll Zebo out there for 40 minutes in a big blowout loss. So while I do think Zebo is going to play well in the beginning and have a nice points and, and look like he's going to... Uh, take you to to the to the fire um i don't see him playing the entire game i see more jim michael green and uh some of the other younger guys get into the mix against the cleveland cavaliers uh do i like lebron james in this game somebody's gotta do the blowing out but that price is so high for that i don't, I don't think that's worth a blowout i don't think that's worth a blow so i won't be using much lebron james tomorrow uh Kyrie irving no against the stingy memphis perimeter defense uh, Kevin Love is in play, definitely. Uh, he's the guy that can shoot the jump shot on the outside as well as go in and play from the inside out. Uh, he's definitely in play. I like J.R. Smith a lot in this game, too. He's going to be a shooting guard punt, punt that I use uh, a lot because I think that they want to get him going. And, uh, of course, uh, I think at 3.5K, you kind of can't argue with that. So the next game is going to be the Orlando Magic going to Atlanta to take on the Hawks. Um I definitely like, on the Atlanta side, uh, I definitely like Thabo Cephalosha. Uh, my favorite play is going to be Dwight Howard from this game. Uh, going up against an old, uh, his old Orlando team, I think he's going to play well against them. Paul Millsap is also in play for me. So that right there makes this a three-man stack. That makes this a three-man stack. And I can go two different ways with it. I can go Schroeder, uh, Schroeder Cephalosha, uh, Howard. I can go Schroeder. Uh, Dwight Howard and um, Paul Millsap. I can go Paul Millsap, uh, uh, Howard, whoever. I can I can mix it up, and I like that about this game. Uh, on the Orlando side, there's not too much I'm interested in outside of Fournier and Peyton. I think those can both be really good plays. We've got to keep our eyes, like we said, on uh, Nikolai Vucevic and Bismack Biyombo because if they are both out, then that does make way for Serge Ibaka, who I still don't think is going to have as good a game as maybe Dwight Howard or Paul Millsap. Uh, <clears throat> the next game we're going to get into is going to be the Chicago Bulls at home uh, in a 209-point total with the Chicago Bulls being the home favorite. They are giving up seven points to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, I don't see it. I don't see it. Minnesota's got a shot at beating them at the house. This is a high-energy, up-pace, up-tempo team with Carl Anthony Towns in the middle. He is going to destroy... Uh, 
uh, Robin Lopez, so I really like Carl Anthony Towns tomorrow. I also the only guy I don't like that most people are gonna be on is I don't like Jimmy Butler on the Chicago side, and I don't like uh, um, Andrew Wiggins. I don't. I would rather go Zach Levine. I like Zach Levine in this game, and I like Rajon Rondo from the Chicago side. Uh, it's gonna be a, a lot. Of, I think it's gonna be a lot of points. I would bet the over in this game, the two hundred nine point total. I don't think that's going to hold. I would definitely bet the over in this game, and I think it's going to be a lot closer than the Vegas spread says it is. Next game we're going to get into is going to be the Golden State Warriors going to New Orleans to take on the Pelicans. It is a 225-point total. Right now, it is the highest point total on the night. Um, you know, it's, they're giving 10.5 to the New Orleans Pelicans. And can the Golden State Warriors do that right now on this incredible uh, road swing that they've been on, doing what they've been doing and barely winning games and losing the game? I'm not sure if they can do that. I mean, we saw uh, a really spirited uh, team in, in with the New Orleans Pelicans when you talk about uh, off of their bench. We talk about Tim Frazier jumping off of the bench and getting that triple-double the other night. So I'm not sure uh, that we can just write this game off as a, a blowout. Because Golden State plays up or down to the level of the competition, something they didn't do in years past. And I think that's got a lot to do with Kevin Durant and having the killer instinct to just blow them, blow every team out. We're not seeing that from the Golden State Warriors this year. So I think there is this chance that with Anthony Davis playing well, the New Orleans Pelicans can hang around in this game and make it interesting at least up until the third quarter, in, inside, deep inside the third quarter. So I do like Anthony Davis tomorrow. And I also like uh, Tim Frazier if we don't see a full allotment of minutes from Drew Holiday. Um, on the Golden State side, Klay Thompson is my favorite play. Uh, we can also look to uh, Curry in this game too. Uh, I think he's going to be able to be able to have a, a really nice game and be in line for a lot of minutes if the game script and the game flow plays out the way I think it is, where Golden State really doesn't pull away, pull away until we get a little deeper into the third quarter. And it's not, I don't think it's going to be a 30-point game at the half like they've been doing uh, some other teams. So uh, if I had to pick anybody from the Golden State side, it would be Curry and Thompson. If I had to pick anybody from the New Orleans side, it would be uh, Tim Frazier and Anthony Davis. Uh, next game we're going to get into is going to be a game I'm going to have a lot invested in. This is the second highest point total on the slate. Of course, the Oklahoma City and the Portland point total hasn't been released, so I'd imagine it's going to be a little higher. It's going to be up in the two teens, I believe. But let's talk about the New York Knicks going to Phoenix and taking on the Suns. This is a 220.5 point total with the New York Knicks giving up three and a half. So of all the games on the slate so far, this is the closest point total, which means uh, people in Vegas think it's going to be the most competitive game. And I kind of share that sentiment with them. Uh, I like Derrick Rose. I like uh, Eric Bledsoe in this game on the Phoenix side. I like Alex Lynn as a cheap uh, punt play at center. I also like Tyson Chandler to have a decent game. I'm going to have some lineups with both of those guys in it where I just punt two spots at 4,900 and 3,900, and I just let them roll out there, and I just get every rebound, every block shot, every every post play, every post move uh, will be accredited to my, uh, to my lineup. Uh, I also think we can look to um, uh, Melo. In this game, and poor Zingas as well. If I had to do, uh, if I had to, if I had to stack something on the New York side, it would be a combination of either Brandon Jennings or Derrick Rose with Melo and poor Zingas. I like that. I think that's going to be a really good way uh, to maximize on that 220 point total with just a minus three and a half uh, point differential between the two teams. Uh, some folks are going to like uh, Brandon Knight off of the bench. I think he's playable, but I'm not going to be going that direction very much tomorrow. I think that we're going to see meaningful uh, starting minutes uh, from <clears throat> Eric Bledsoe. And for that reason, I don't see, I don't foresee uh, uh, Brandon Knight getting a lot of minutes off of the bench. Somebody we can look to for the cheap is going to be Leandro Barbosa. That dude's been, he's been like the heart and soul of the second team. He's been balling out. So if you wanted a cheap uh, punt play at the shooting guard position, you can definitely look to Leandro Barbosa. The last game on the slate is going to be the Oklahoma City Thunder uh, traveling to Portland to the Motor Center to take on uh, the Portland Trailblazers. Now, Portland just got beat tonight 
in LA. It's not a far cry from LA to Portland, so I'm not concerned with the back to back. Plus, these are young studs that are playing tomorrow. And we're going to see a lot of up and down, a lot of fast pace. This is probably going to be the game that a lot of folks have the most in salary invested in. If it's either it's because you have uh, um, Russell Westbrook on the team or you're fucking with a McCullum and uh, uh, Dame Lillard stack. I definitely can see both of these guys, um, speaking of Lillard and Westbrook, having a very decent game, a point guard duel. And I think that that was going to bring out the best in Dame Lillard. Now, would I go as far to say that I would not roster Westbrook because I think that uh, Dame can have a similar game as him tomorrow? I don't know if I'm going to go that far just, just based off the usage and what we've seen so far during the season. But I do feel like if you don't roster Westbrook, you've got to roster Dame. That's just how I feel. Every line of, either I'm going to have I'm gonna have some Dame or some, or some uh, Westbrook, either or. And fitting them both in is going to be hell. And some, some of us are going to try to do that as well. Uh, on the Portland side, as far as um, in the low post, Ed Davis is a very cheap punt play at center or power forward. I think he's power forward and eligible on DraftKings. Uh, Mason Plumley is going to be, a, a, I think, a fairly decent play tomorrow. Uh, on the Oklahoma City side, I don't like Steven Adams as much as I like Ennis Cantor. I think Ennis Cantor can, can pack more of a scoring punch off of the bench. And, the, of course, the price is cheaper on him. So if I'm if I'm because I'm not gonna just roster Russell, roster Russell Westbrook alone, I'm gonna take Westbrook and a cheaper guy on his team, just so that if he does do, play a lot and do a lot, he's gonna be uh, helping contributing to somebody else's fantasy scoring. So I do like Oklahoma City uh, to win the game also, and I think Westbrook and Cantor are gonna be my two favorite plays from the Oklahoma City side. This has been another installment of the DFS Sweatshop on YouTube. Uh, shout out again to all of the YouTube followers, all of the subscriber family. Thank you uh, for doing, for supporting the show in the purest way by just giving me a voice, man, and tuning in night in and night out and listening to me. Uh, thank you uh, for those that have followed me over on Twitter, and we've done the whole thing. There's a lot of ways to support the show. If you'd like to support the show any other way further than just looking at it, uh, there's a button over here. It says support the show. Go and click that motherfucker and let it take you wherever it does. Uh, you can also hit up the website, www.dfssweatshop.com. You can also cop you some uh, uh, sweatshop swag. Uh, the link's going to be in the bottom of the video. T-shirts, hoodies. We go, if we sell a lot, then we can do other colors. So come on, y'all. Let's get motivated. Help out the show. Help out the brand. It's going to the improvements. Um, and also, if you wanted to support my personal uh, uh, PayPal, you can do that at SimmonsMaurice95 uh, at Yahoo.com This has again been your DFS Jerusalem. Thank you very much and you know what the one thing we do in the DFS Sweatshop, we always always keep it 300